What if I told you AI could help answer two of the most common questions I've received from my YouTube community over the last four years? Specifically, these two questions are regarding how to handle hypothetical interview questions. And diving deeper, it's how do I create great clarifying questions and how do I build great frameworks? So in today's video, we're gonna do mostly a screen share where we're gonna dive in to OpenAI and ChatGPT, and I'm gonna show you how to utilize these tools to help you with those two concepts. Because thematically, they come up time and time again, and what this will really do is this will speed up our interview prep time significantly. So let's dive in. Welcome to OpenAI. This is the playground on OpenAI. We'll also flip over to ChatGPT. This is going to be version 3. This will be the newest version, just so you can see the difference between the two platforms. Remember, we can always enter more specific data on these platforms. The goal here is just to show you, hey, if you implemented this information, this is what it would kick back. And then again, we're going to dive in and we're really going to look at how this tool will help inform both our clarifying questions and our interview frameworks, making things way, way easier for us. So let's go with a common program manager question that a company like Google might ask. You're the program manager of a six person engineering team and three separate executives come to you with a total of three project proposals. They need to be done in six months. This would be easily accomplished if you had four engineers per project. However, your team is understaffed relative to the work. How would you approach this? So this would be your question. You'd basically hit enter. And this is what OpenAI came back with. This is all the information. So I'm not gonna read through all this information for the purpose of this specific video. I'll literally stop here so you could pause and read through all of it. Now, the thing I like about OpenAI's platform is you can actually take notes within the platform. So here's what I did. I took all that information and Actually, what I did first was I built the framework. So these were the biggest concepts that showed up when I put this question into the OpenAI platform and it popped out these items. So I just took the main themes from what it returned, prioritization, complexity, requirements, timeline, strategy, resources, milestones, planning, and communication. So this is great. And then what it also does is now we have these key concepts that are clearly coming up from this AI platform that are gonna inform great framework concepts. Then we have a dual purpose. Then we can go back and build clarifying questions. So then we look at a question maybe around prioritization, such as do any of the projects have regulatory or governance items requiring them to be completed in six months? Or we go on to something from a complexity standpoint. Do these projects have varying impact on the business or similar impact, right? And then we have, have we completed similar projects in the past? This is requirements based. And then do I have the ability to utilize other engineers or a budget to hire a contractor, for example? This would be a resources question. It could be contractor or contractors. So all of a sudden, all this ambiguity behind clarifying questions and your framework Boom, we got both and both are very straightforward. So let's flip over. So for chat GPT, you can see if you were to scroll through this information, and again, I'll kind of highlight it so you can pause your screen here. The information is going to look somewhat similar. Now, the more specific you are in your search, the more number of items you call out, the more specificity, it's going to return greater results. But this is just a practice question. So I put it right in there and this is what it kicked back. And again, I'm gonna hold on each one of these screens just so you can pause and read through it if you want. So let's go into our second question. This is a very common random question for a product manager, potentially going in for a product manager role at Google. Create a go-to-market strategy for a rug business. So again, I'm gonna just scroll up. There's more than six items here. so. We're looking at things like target market, footprint, differentiation, brand messaging, digital marketing, leveraging media, 
now I'll just scroll up here so we can have seven, eight, nine, and 10 from partnerships to influencers, competition and progress. And you'll see that then when we went down and we created our framework, we were taking these items, target market, demographics, geography, distribution, messaging, marketing, partnerships, competition, and tracking. This would be a pretty good go-to-market framework. Remember, maybe it doesn't have everything that you need, but it has a number of the items and it starts to get your brain flowing. Then again, we'll kick back to the clarifying questions. Is this a new business or established rug business? Now, this would cover many of those concepts. Is my target market individuals, businesses, or both? So again, we're going in a target market. Is my rug business domestic or global? Now we're focused in on geography. Is this a brick and mortar business, e-commerce, or both? Now we're talking about our distribution strategy. These product manager questions are incredibly difficult. So just getting some context and framework, and there are really good product frameworks out there, but this is just one way to go about it. Now we'll flip over. We'll look a little bit at chat GPT and again it's going to kick back somewhat similar information so the information should look similar this one actually numbered it for us which is very helpful you will see and again I'm just going to pause here for the first four you will see some consistency but you'll also see some differentiation and it goes into a sum up here as well so number of items to consider here just as you're looking through it and again you can look at both to see the differences so now let's go to an engineering question this is actually a little bit more targeted towards eng leadership how do you make sure your engineers are providing you with good code so let's just look through this for a second so some of this stuff is pretty straightforward again coding standards and guidelines code reviews automation feedback and check-ins so this is a, a pretty high level. Now it doesn't cover everything. There could be some like repeatability and monitoring and those kinds of items, but this is what this kicked back for us. So when we think about good code, maybe we're thinking about these standards and guidelines. Of course, we're thinking about quality, consistency, efficiency, and reliability. Then we're thinking more about the review and feedback and testing and automating. So this is a great coding framework again, you might add something additional if you wanted to. You might add a strength, but this is a good foundation and then kicks back to our clarifying questions. Are the engineers my direct reports, team members, or on a collaborative engineering team? Now this would cover many of the concepts. Then do we have established coding guidelines and standards in place? That is very, very important because we're trying to get this historical data piece figured out always. Then. We're gonna flip over and talk a little bit about timeline. Like I wanna know how long I have to complete or update the code, and this is really in the review and feedback stage, and then have we tested the code before? Again, I'm just trying to find out this historical data, and this goes back to that testing component. Very, very simplistic and straightforward. Now let's flip over. You can see with chat GPT, the simplicity of their answer. Um, this is a little bit more lean, a little bit more combined, but again, we can always do follow-up questions in this chat feature to see if we can get more data. We could ask this question and then say, provide me with five concepts, 10 concepts, and that would spit out a whole bunch of different answers. So you can get really, really creative with this. Let's go into our last question. So this is a very simplistic question. Now this could come, I, I kind of was thinking, okay, this is maybe a salesperson question. So what are the three most important components of forecasting? But this could be important for a lot of different roles, but I was just thinking salesperson. So it really was very simplistic, right? We're only asking for three. So it's data collection, model building, and evaluation. And then as we scroll down, I just changed the wording a little bit on my forecasting framework data collection, that could be historical data, that could just be data, modeling and evaluation. And then, do I have access to historical data, data collection? Have we done this type of forecasting in the past or is this our first time? This is modeling and evaluation. Are we focusing in on forecasting for one client or multiple clients, evaluation? And then, oh, there's a typo there. Do we have a timeline to complete our forecast? Is it a day, a week, a month, evaluation, right? Because there's so many components of evaluation within forecasting. And then what does this also inform? It potentially informs the fact that evaluation would be a great concept 
to focus in on when building those assumptions and building your first solution. Now, of course, that's a whole different subject, but what you can see here is that each one of these questions that we plugged in, we are getting such fantastic data without having to go to Google, search through tons of websites, dive into tons of my information, and I'm not saying to not watch my information, but it's a great way to get quickly organized to figure out two of these critical components for answering hypothetical questions. And I just wanna quickly flip over here, and again, with chat GPT, you can see similar type of answer it's a little bit leaner but we could obviously dive in deeper and ask follow-up questions if you've never used these tools before check them out you may have seen them on youtube or instagram or TikTok. these tools are incredibly valuable they are going to change the overall landscape but let's use them to our benefit and let's allow these tools to help us with our interview prep i really hope this video helps good luck